Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I reached out to my community over Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Instagram, all these other platforms. And uh, I asked you guys, what questions do you guys have that you want me to answer? So today I'm going to be going over a bunch of questions and hopefully covering the bases and answering some questions. And uh, yeah. Let's get into it, I suppose. We're going to start with the first question. Is the sick case worth? I get asked this a lot. Uh, in my opinion, yes, absolutely worth. Keys, key cards, um, money, uh, bitcoins, uh, skull rings, uh, pro kill necklaces. Uh, the sick case is great. It's huge, holds a ton of keys. It's only two slots. So it's essentially like a, uh, a documents case on crack. So... For me personally, this patch, the sick case is one of my favorite new items. So is the sick case worth it? Yes. If you only have three mil rubles in your stash, probably not worth it. <laughs> if you have maybe, you know, six, seven mil or whatever, and you're kind of looking to splash the cash a little bit and grab yourself a nice little upgrade, then I would do it. But don't put yourself in debt for one, okay? Very important, All right? We'll get back to that a little bit later. But yeah, don't put yourself in debt for one. Is the scav box worth it? So, the scab box in your hideout, lads, if you basically always want to make profit on it, you buy the cheapest one, okay? I do the 70k one myself. I get positive returns out of it, maybe 60% of the time, 70% of the time. Sometimes you'll get a really good item out of it, you know? Um, but guys, it all just comes down to this. It's a gamble. You might get complete crap 10 times in a row. You might get something really good. You know, it's, it's a complete gamble. Is it worth it? To me, yes, because it's fun. Um, am I necessarily always looking for huge returns every time I do it? No, every time I go to my hideout, I claim it, I start another one. I don't really think about it very much after that. So if you have the money, you want to have a little bit of fun, go for it. Is it going to make you a shit ton of money? Probably not. Best way to get over gear fear. So this is what I tell everybody that comes in and asks me, like, how do you get over gear fear? Um, and I get asked this question, funnily enough, by people who generally have a lot of money and a lot of gear. Um, but can't seem to stop hatchet running or pistol running. So, guys... It takes an M4 to earn an M4. It takes an M4 to make an M4. You know what I mean? If you're leaving gear in your stash and you're never intending on using it, just looking at it, or you're too afraid to take it out, just remember this. Tarkov is still on a wipe cycle. If you leave that gear in your stash forever, you might as well not have it. It's not worth anything to you. Um, dissolve the gear. Sell it. Buy other stuff that you like. Use the gear that you get. Modify the gear that you get so it suits your playstyle. But use it. It's a complete waste if you never use it. You will find that once you take that step for moving away from hatchet running and pistol running uh, and actually running like decent gear, you'll find that you'll enjoy this game so much more. It's so much more fun when you run gear. Um, so just think about that. If you're never going to use it, you've already lost it. You know, game's on a wipe cycle. Have fun. Use some stuff you've never used before. Get out there. Kill some people. Take their things. Make some profit. Gear fear. Gone. Right? You just got to take the step, lads. Take the step. Right, next question. Which traders to level first? So, I try to level Skier as quick as I can, because he's got some nice attachments. Same thing with Peacekeeper. I rush Peacekeeper quite quickly. Um, those are my preferences. I think Skier and Peacekeeper are probably the two best uh, options for the early game anyway. Mechanic has some nice things too, but like, Skier, Peacekeeper, I'd focus on getting them up as quick as you can. Uh, they're my go-tos anyway, as far as early level traders go. Uh, which traders to sell stuff to? <clears throat> so what you want to do every time you get a gun that has some attachments on it that you're looking to sell you right click on it you hit disassemble you sell everything that you can to skier first and then you sell everything else to mechanic um you don't want to sell guns or gear to peacekeeper for dollars you actually make a loss on this what you want to do is sell everything to skier and uh, mechanic uh, also mechanic takes rigs and armor and stuff like that as well um, but yeah, what you want to do is sell to those other traders and then just simply buy USD from, uh, Peacekeeper. <clears throat> That's the most efficient way of doing it. That's how I get all my dollars. Um, should I try and team up with other player scavs? Flip a coin, man. Flip a coin. You never know if they're going to be friendly or you never know if they're going to screw you once you get to the end of the raid. It's a gamble that you have to judge yourself. Uh, I've been screwed more times than anything else. Is that because I'm a streamer? Maybe. I don't know. Um, do they know who I am when they're scaving into the raids with me or whatever? 
yeah, it, it, that's up to you. That's down to your own judgment. And again, it can just be as simple as a coin toss. Like it's just, it's 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 hard to say, man. It's hard to say. Um. All right. So we got another question here. How to peak without dying fast, slow leaning, etc. Issues with dying mostly when I peak, but somebody uh peaks and they kill me. Uh, so they come from a background of CS and Rainbow Six Siege, and they're not used to how uh, peaking works in Tarkov. Okay, so the, the f number two rule of Tarkov, if the number one rule is there's always one more, the second rule is never repeak the same angle twice, okay? You will gain more success in this game by simply repositioning. If you're pinned somewhere, quick peaking, like, <clears throat> this is this is again something that I might as well just talk about it now. I get asked all the time, how do I get better at this game? There isn't really some magical things that I can say that'll instantly make you better at the game. Yes, there's advice I can give you that's maybe marginally increase your survival rate or how much money you make or whatever. But uh, lads, the biggest thing is time. Invest time into the game and you will get better over time. Don't repeat the same mistakes. You will improve. Um, but yeah, as far as this goes, like it's like my biggest thing i would say is getting close to the edge of a box so like say your pmc is here and then you do alt e or alt q to like quick lean p or like uh, sidestep peak angles uh that catches a lot of people off guard i would try to get used to doing that um what i like to do as well is i will move back from the wall i will ads with my scope or my optic or whatever and then i'll just quick like jiggle peak what that will do is it'll give you intel on where the other people are and it'll let you know what they're doing. If they're immediately shooting at you the second that you jiggle peek, they shouldn't be able to kill you unless you have the reflexes of a god. Um, that will tell you that, okay, I'm pinned down from this angle. They're going to be expecting me. They're going to keep holding that angle, right? So maybe peek another angle, try and reposition, throw a nade towards them to try and get them to move while they're moving, watch where they're going, and then take the shot when you have the upper hand. But never repeat the same angle if somebody knows you're there. You will die nine out of ten times. Next question. So popular keybinds, i.e. to discard slash loot quickly. So I just use the delete key. You can rebind it to whatever you want, but uh, I just use the delete key. I've got a 60% keyboard, so it's pretty easy for me to hit it. It's just over here on the right, small keyboard. Uh, loot quickly, so uh, control click will put stuff into your inventory. Alt click uh, or alt right click will equip it to your character. So there you go. As for any other keybinds, uh, all my keybinds are pretty much standard. Uh, I don't really use anything out of the ordinary as far as my keybinds go. That's and that's the honest truth. People don't believe me when I tell them, but I use the standard Tarkov keybinds. I don't use anything else. Uh, also, quick tip for anybody who doesn't know, middle mouse is now a quick key to fold guns. And just in case anybody else didn't know, you can use middle mouse button to quickly examine items too. So there you go. Uh, another question. Things that are worth keeping or barter selling. This is down to you because there's so many different barters in this game and it depends on your play style, depends on uh, your money, depends on so many things. Um, I only keep a couple of things. I keep like... <clears throat> uh, the skull rings, I keep vases, I keep teapots, um, and I just keep bitcoins for no real reason, and I also keep gold chains. Why do I keep those? Because they trade for high level armor. So teapots and the vases trade for zucks, and then the uh, skull rings trade for like, what is it, mobility gen 4s, and the gold chains trade for uh the full body gen 4 i can't remember uh it's been a while since i've used it but items that are worth keeping obviously graphics cards um uh, for obvious reasons uh for your hideout and for your tasks and they're immensely valuable um other things like any valuables like teapots vases gold chains bitcoins gp coins all that stuff Keep that, put it into your container. If you don't want to use the trades, you can right click on them. You can do a required search and that will tell you what they actually trade for. If you don't have any interest in any of those items, sell them to therapist or sell them on the flea market. Um, other trades, I don't really do any of them myself, so I'm not really the person to ask. But there's a lot of barters in the traders for like meds and other things like that. Uh, the easiest way to do it, lads, is to just do a required search. See what they trade for. See what's worth it to you. Keep an eye out for them in your raid cater it to your needs depends on what you need as a you know as a player like what what are you looking for
So, another question here. What do you do when you finish all the tasks? Uh, you can do what I did and start a hardcore account. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, but what do you do when you finish all the tasks? I don't know. Look for other people to play with. Uh, go around. Kill players. Kill squads. Try out different weapon combinations that you've never used before. Uh, go collecting all the keys. Go run military base. Find all the keys for that. Uh, set yourself a goal, though. Um, I haven't really set myself a goal other than like I was like, oh, I want to make a million dollars this patch, but I kind of gave up on that. I've just been kind of enjoying the game, uh, playing with other people and stuff like that. It's you got to set your own tasks and make your own fun with it. If you are getting bored, um, try and make him 100 million rubles. It's harder than it sounds. <laughs> uh, so you could give that a go. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. If you have a standard account and haven't upgraded your stash yet, is it worth to keep barter items at the time? Or should I just sell them until you upgrade your stash? Totally depends on the amount of space that you have in your stash. And if you're completely screwed for space, I would just sell them. If you're completely stuck for space, just sell them. Maybe sell all the barter items on the flea market and invest in some items cases first or some thick cases or thick weapons cases or whatever. <clears throat> I would probably suggest that first. But yeah, if you've absolutely no room at all, I'd just sell them. I wouldn't worry about it. You can always regain it again anyway. Invest in cases if you're playing on a standard account. That would be that would be my best advice. Uh, tips for running labs. If you're new to labs, run an M1A. <laughs> run an M1A and some cheap armor. Kill a raider or two, grab their loot and dip. Do that over and over and over again, as long as you can keep sustaining the uh, cost of the lab keycard in order to build up some gear. Play slowly. Uh, don't take every fight you hear. If you're nervous about playing labs, which I'm assuming you are because you're asking me for tips about running labs, I would say... Avoid firefights, fight the raiders, uh, do some looting if you have any key cards. The medical rooms are insane money. They're so slept on uh, how much money you can make off stims and meds that you can collect from labs. Um, but yeah, one other piece of advice I'd like to put out there right now. And this is something I was talking about on stream today. Lads, you don't need to take every fight. You really don't. That is going to get you killed so many times, especially if you're a new player. You don't need to run directly towards every single gunfight you hear. You can chill, you can weigh out the situation, you can decide whether you think it's worth the risk or not, and you can just pass it by. You can just go to the extract or do what else you're doing and move on. Uh, so tips for labs, play slowly if you're new and uh, be as cautious as you can. Your ears are your best friend. Use that information. And uh, yeah, as soon as you think you've made a decent bit of money, leave. Don't hang around. You'd be surprised who you'd run into even 30 minutes late into a lab raid. Easy and quick ways to make money. Interchange. Tech stores. Easy money. Farm factory with a toss. It's basically a zero ruble investment. You kill a couple of scavs, grab a scab BP, grab uh, grab four guns, ditch your toss, grab some guns. Uh, you'll make a lot of money. Nighttime factory. Also the same thing. Grab a gun, put an X400 on it. Go farm some scavs. You might run into some juicy boys, but the same thing will happen when you're playing on daytime factory as well. But... It's also very, very little effect, uh, investment for potentially a lot of gains. Uh, so always loot scavs, backpacks, pockets. You never know when you're going to get a valuable key. Check the jackets in the office and factory. Check the safe. You can check the filing cabinets as well if that's what you're into. And uh, yeah, that's a super easy way to make money. Interchange. There is loot everywhere for the picking. Uh, all of the houses on shoreline. All those jackets, duffel bags, everything. You can go loot all those. Go loot all the caches. Cash is on customs, shoreline, interchange. You can make a ton of money doing that too. Playing the flea market as well. If you're financially minded or whatever and you know you have a decent idea of how much things are worth on the flea market, go ahead and do that. Flip items. You can make a lot of money doing that. Best way to kill killer. Easiest way to kill killer. Telling you right now. You get an MP9 and you fill it with Luger CCIs. You shoot him in the legs. Easiest way to kill killer. You don't believe me? Go try it yourself. You will kill him every single time. No issues. Unless he just randomly one taps you before you spot him. Um, yeah. Honestly, you could do this naked with an MP9. <laughs> you could. I wouldn't recommend it. I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend wearing like probably a class 4 armor. Uh, you could get away without a helmet. But I would definitely recommend a class 4 armor. Bring a big backpack with you as well. Take his rig. Take his armor. Take his helmet. Take his gun. And boogie. Uh, but yeah, the MP9 is a solid gun for killing. I did 50, 60 kills of killer out of the 100 with an MP9 with Luger CCIs. Really, really good. Shoot him in the legs, stun locks him, can't do anything. You'll melt him. No problems. How long do you keep repairing armor and helmets before you discard it and buy a new one? Uh, so my general rule with armor and helmets, helmets, this is generally like never an issue. Um, 
But if it was an issue, I would say when it gets to about 60% of its overall durability, I'd swap it out for a different one. Uh, this is a little bit different with the cheaper armors, the ones that are made of ceramic, because, like, they repair so badly that, like, you might as well just run it, you know? If it has 25 or 30 HP, ah, just risk it, you know? Risk it. Why not? But it's down to you. If you don't want to take the chance, buy a fresh one, sell the old one to Skier, and, uh, yeah, then just reinvest with a another piece of armor. What's your favorite weapon to use along with mods to use on it? And what ammo is your favorite? So my recent most favorite gun is the new 308 MDR. Very simple. You buy the gun. You put the uh, Wave QD suppressor on it. You put an RK2 grip on the front of it. And then you slap a laser on it and you're good to go. I love that gun. And I run M80s in it. I think M61s are a bit overpriced. And I only use M62s for sniping since they're tracers. And I can see where my bullets are going. Uh, I want to solo run labs and I have enough money to fund my raids but i'm bad i need tips play more that's about as uh that's about as far as it goes man you, you just gotta play more get in there learn the map play it in offline mode fight against the raiders in offline mode practice 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 and play more and you will get better three most valuable loot items and the best way to find them <laughs> oh jesus uh so lead x's uh i have a video on it if you want to check it out farming lead x's on shoreline they're also on labs uh like the red key card obviously the king of all uh king of all expensive items which can be found on shoreline that i also have a guide for as well and then uh god i guess one of the other keys but like i mean oh, jesus i don't know if you're talking about like maximum profits and stuff like farming interchange and all the computers and the tech stores for graphics cards is probably the best play uh but at the start of the wipe flash drives would be very high on that list too uh do you personally believe raiders are op and if so why no Raiders are fairly balanced for uh, the loot that they have and the weapons they have, the armor they have. I think Raiders are in a pretty good place right now. Do you ever think how to handle a firefight or do you just go with the flow? Um, so it's very rarely going with the flow. I'm usually deep in thought about what I'm doing during a fight, but I don't talk about it because I'm concentrating. Um, but no, there's definitely a method to uh, how I approach fights. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you go with the flow. Sometimes you just go with your gut. But... Uh, Generally, there's a lot of thinking behind it, and I think most EFT streamers do the same thing that I do as well. How do I get good? Play more, Alex. Play more, my man. What's the best hatchling map? <sighs> I'm not going to answer that question. How to deal with dorm campers? Dorms campers. Uh, grenades. <laughs> grenades are your friend, man. Grenades are definitely your friend for dorm campers. Um, I don't know specifically where you mean. Do you mean shoreline? Do you mean customs? Uh, if, there's, if they think there's a lot of people camping in dorms, uh, I would just avoid it for the time being. Um, but yeah, grenades. Grenades are really good on dorms, for sure. Definitely for good for flushing people out, throwing them through the windows and stuff. How do you consistently make money with gear? No pistol, scab backpack, bullshit. You kill people and you farm high loot spots like Shoreline. That's where I make most of my money. I, I make all my money at the start of the wipe. As soon as I get Ragman unlocked, I run Interchange. And while I'm doing my quests on Interchange, I loot the tech stores, I loot all the PCs, I loot all the expensive quest items and gosh, and I look for flash drives. Uh, I kill scavs, I loot them, I look for keys, I look for everything. I do, like, the majority of my early game money and supplies and quest items, everything, all comes from Interchange. Like, everything. Like, I make 90% of my money just running Interchange. And then, once I can afford it, I'll buy all my keys for Shoreline, and that's where all of my other money comes from uh, while I'm doing all my tasks on Shoreline. What do we keep versus what do we sell? What's worth buying? Things like cases might be a good idea. Well, cases, of course, are always a good investment because you're going to keep them forever. Um, but it's very hard to like answer this question what to keep versus what to sell weapon attachments all that kind of stuff is generally worth selling unless they're attachments you like to use then you get rid of them um, but I mean you'll very quickly start to learn like what are the items that are worth nothing and what items are actually like sustain some kind of value at this point in the wipe a lot of the barter items and a lot of the quest items are worth nothing now because a lot of people already have that stuff done therefore they have crashed uh, at the start of the wipe best thing to do look at some of the early tasks Look at what quest items people need. And if you want to make a ton of cash, like a metric shit ton of cash, right? You get that task done, right? Get your supply of them. And then you go farm them. You farm all that stuff for like a couple of hours. You will make millions on the flea market. It is such free money. It's insane. Uh, where's the red key card? How about that? I think it would be good to know if you can shoot through Kiba's bulletproof windows. I've heard that some rounds can penetrate, but act weird might be good so that noobs like myself aren't caught off guard getting killed through it. Okay, so guys, 
I'm going to explain how glass works in Escape from Tarkov, right? When you're shooting through glass or when you're being shot at through glass, okay? Um, it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's broken, okay? It's, it's bad. Um, sometimes they do shit tons of damage through the glass. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes bullets go through. Sometimes they don't. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. It's just random chance and gambling. That's, that's all the glass in Kiba is. It is not bulletproof. It is not bulletproof. You can be killed through it and you can be killed through both sides of it as well. Because it's happened to me a million times. Um, so yeah, there you go. If I have a large amount of money, around two to four million rubles, but little to no gear, how should I use my money wisely to obtain larger amounts of items? Okay. So I'm going to lay down some mathematics. If you take 10% of your overall value, considering that you are, let's say, let's say you've got four million rubles, right? Actually, let's use the, the lower example. Say you have two million rubles, right? That is 200,000 rubles that you could spend on a loadout for 10 raids. Can, like, and if you make no money and you never extract, you lose everything. But that gives you 10 potential raids with a pretty damn decent gear setup at 200k. That's enough to get you armor, helmet, good gun, decent ammo, meds, everything you need for a, for a run. Um, if you get really unlucky and you die 10 times, then all your money is obviously gone. But uh, if you happen to succeed, you know, in uh, a couple of those raids, you can stand to make a decent amount of money back. Um, you can be a little bit more uh, careful with your money. You can maybe spend 100k per loadout, 150k per loadout if you want to kind of squeeze an extra few runs out of it. But yeah, use your money to uh, buy gear, to fund raids. And the better the gear you have, the better chance you have uh, to kill all of the other juicy players you're going to run into. Yeah, so there you go. Next question. We've got, what is Tweak's favorite way to make money early game sub level 15 20 sub level 15 20 uh so here's the thing i don't make any money uh sub level 15 to 20 i will spend all of that time spending on my starting cash on quest items and uh i okay so i'll, I'll explain this okay early game i like usually in tarkov for the first like two weeks i will be completely broke the reason for that is because I'm genuine, generally spending, well, maybe not the first two weeks, the first week anyway, the first four or five days I will be broke because I'll be spending all of my money buying attachments for all the weapon uh, gunsmith tasks. I will be buying all the other quest items that I need to complete quests faster. Um, and generally I make all of that money just from like interchange. Like I make most of my money from interchange, finding other random quest items on other maps and stuff like that. So I would say uh, interchange is where I make most of my money. Before level 15 to 20, all of my money comes from scavs and picking up their guns. That's where I get everything else from. Dog tags are worthless. Generally, other players are just going to be hatchlings at this point in the game. You might run into a guy with a Ford armor and a Kiver on. And you kill him, you take his stuff and you leave. That's a lot of money earned uh, off the bat with their EOD AKs or whatever. Um, but yeah. Another thing that I do is I redeem my Christmas gift. I sell all of it, even the items case. I only keep the key bar. Um, so I will sell a lot of that for extra early game starting cash. Um, so yeah, there you go. What sources, website, apps are good to help new players learn the knowledge, uh, i.e. how to build weapons. Uh, if you know, uh, is which is in the end, what parts go with what, uh, what items are useful trades for noobs and so on. I have many questions. Um, so lads, EFT wiki. All of those questions that you ask your streamers every day, EFT Wiki has all of your answers. Uh, also, Veritas has a mobile app that you can check out. I believe it's called Battle Buddy. I think it's only on iOS. I'm not sure if he has it released on Android yet, uh, but there is. It's the EFT Wiki plus more uh, in that. So if you want to go check that out, uh, it's called Battle Buddy. Uh, just check it on your app store. Another another uh, thing I will say about building weapons and what parts you can put on certain weapons. Once you've identified a ton of weapon attachments and parts and stuff like that, um, go to your hideout, build the weapons workbench, right? Right click on your gun, hit edit preset, and then every individual slot on your gun, you'll be able to click that. A drop down menu will come up with all of the possible attachments that can fit onto that gun so that you will never accidentally buy something that doesn't work on your weapon. Uh, a lot of people really overlook this and it's really surprising to me. Um, that is the best thing they've added this patch. It makes learning how to mod guns so much easier for new players and it makes building guns way faster for uh, for everybody, really. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is all of the questions. 
that have been asked for uh, this episode of, uh, I guess, Ask Tweak. I don't, I, I don't know what we're calling this series. I don't know. Um, so, guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like. Hit the old sub button if you want to see more content like this in the future. Also, go follow me on Twitch, where we do all of this kind of stuff live. And uh, you can ask me questions there live. Uh, so, if you guys have any questions and you would like to leave a comment down below, we might make another episode of this. We'll see. We'll see how many episodes we can make of this. If you guys like it, we'll make more. So, any questions, leave them in the section down below. Comment section down below. But, lads, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, my dudes.